Welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Professor Hiranaka Takafumi from Japan. Dr. Hiranaka is Chief of Department of Orthopedic Surgery and the Director of Joint Surgery at the Takatsuki General Hospital in Osaka, Japan. He's also a clinical professor at the Kobe University School of Medicine and also the Director of Ajinkai Healthcare Corporation in Japan. Dr. Hiranaka completed orthopedic residence at the Kobe University School of Medicine in 1988. He's certified by the Japanese Orthopedic Association for joint arthroplasty and regenerative medicine. During his professional tenure, he has performed around 2,800 knee arthroplasties, of which 1,225 are knees, 1,557 are uni knees, and also performed around 600 plus hip arthroplasties. He has around 64 PubMed index publications to his credit, and this is a reviewer for several journals. If you've noticed, Dr. Hiranaka has delivered a couple of lectures on our channel and it's already reached a huge audience. And today is my great job to bring back Professor Hiranaka Taka for me for this wonderful live program. Over to you, Professor. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Uh, Hiranaka. It's very uh, my pleasure to present uh, this uh, good, uh, good site. Uh, today, I will talk about approach. It is very, very basic, but very uh, important uh, to proceed uh, knee arthroplasty. So this, uh, my approach is named Andavasa's approach. Uh, this is a kind of uh, modified and uh, subvastas approach, but compared to the original uh, normal uh, subvastas approach, my approach is very, very convenient and very easy to do. So I uh, today, uh, my talk is very practical, and uh, show my approach, uh, everything. Anyway, so uh, this is the introduction of my hospital. Uh, we have uh, eight members and a very small team. And my hospital is located between Kyoto and Osaka. It's very convenient to uh, visit two very, very famous and popular tourist spots in Japan. So uh, it's, uh, we can get there around 10 or 10 uh, minutes using the train. So if you have a chance, please come and visit and join our surgery team. And now I uh, accept the fellowship from overseas. Just now, one Indian doctor joined India, uh, my fellowship program, and he's learning my approach as the approach uh, Unique compartment arthroplasty, total hip arthroplasty, uh, total knee arthroplasty. So, uh, if you interested in our fellowship and our my about my talk, please contact me via email. Anyway, uh, my today's uh, talk is focused on the approach. It's very very practical. So, uh, this is the subvastas approach. I know the most popular approach is the media parvateral approach, but so I don't like the muscle splitting because it can cause pain, swelling, uh, that can delay the post-operative rehabilitation. So then around 15 years ago, I moved, uh, changed my approach from uh, medial parapetal approach or mid basal approach to subvastas approach because I met the uh, good technique, a kind of subvasa approach, so so called antavastas approach. Then I changed my approach for all uh, primary arthroplasty, including uni and uh, total. So anyway, so subverse approach is bastard, uh, bastard muscles, the bastard medialis is not inside, inside it. So uh, all muscle is retained. So mus uh, unlike the muscle splitting approach, so the benefit is uh, pain reduction, early functional recover, less frequent lateral reticular release, 
and the preservation of the, the blood supplies. So uh, using the sort of bus cells approach, uh, lateral, lateral release is very, very rare uh, because of the medial vector of the patella is retained due to the vast medial muscle. So if you do the medial part of a patella approach, uh, sometimes you require the lateral lateral release. Uh, so uh, in this situation, circulation from the media side is uh, disturbed due to the medial cut and lateral blood supply is stopped by the lateral release. But in the past, uh, subbassus approach can retain both uh, saturation and uh, media vector of the patella. So, but problem is the exposure is limited. So it is considered to be difficult for perform, to perform. And uh, previously QS approach that is a classic uh, sparing approach. Uh, using the special instrument. It is uh, once it was very popular, but uh, sometimes is conversion to uh, the other and the approach such as uh, media parabolic approach uh, is required in some cases. Then I met a good uh, approach, so-called underbusters approach. Uh, this is a modification of subvassas approach that is developed by uh, Dr. Tatsumi. He is a very, very famous Japanese doctor. So this innovation is capsule is inside laterally under the vastas approach. So uh, this approach is called as under vastas approach enables both good exposure and the muscle retention. So we uh, made a further modification on the underbusters approach. So I call it modified underbusters approach. So this approach enables area and less area recovery and less invasiveness. And I added to anatomical capsular repair. So uh, in this approach, I always repair uh, the capsule as perfect as possible. So if once I uh, repair the capsule completely, so intramuscular, uh, sorry, intraarticular uh, breathing cannot leak out to the muscle and other soft tissue that can reduce the post-operative uh, inflammation, swelling and pain. This approach I already published in the clinic in orthopedic surgery in 19, uh, to, uh, 2019. So the summary of this approach is here. So if you have some interest, please accept, find uh, my paper. So I described uh, part of this uh, today's talk in detail like this. Anyway, so in this uh, incision, uh, so approach, the incision is made here just media to the patella tendon along the media uh, border of a patella tendon and the patella uh, from the tibia to velocity around two, uh, two to three centimeter inferior to, uh, no, one centimeter below the joint line and going up and for the UK up to the super pole of patella and plus two, uh, two or three, uh, three centimeters superior to patella for the total. So this is incision is made in knee flexion. Then detach the sub Tunnel tissues from the fascia, fascia, and uh, reticulum under the skin uh, from the cut and reticulum and the, from the fascia 
and the media, the export media border of buses medallis. It is made in new extension and then identify the media border of Patra tendon and identify the media uh, border of bus medialis. Then inside the capsule along the patella tendon, around the two or three centimeter below the joint line, along the patella tendon, and just uh, to the level of the super uh, imperial law pole or patella. And in this area, so you, if you cut the capsule completely, uh, joint the fluid uh, will leak out. Then extend the, the incision along the media border or basal medialis. So uh, carefully looking, you can identify two layers. One layer is the underlying the capsule and uh, superficial uh, face here and the retina cone. So in this uh, stage, incise only face here and the retina cone. Then uh, this uh, length is it depend of the type of arthroplasty. So for the UK, only the two or three centimeter is enough. But for the TK, so Fox uh, face incision uh, extend more, uh, approximately five or, or approximately five centimeter from the insertion of buses medialis. Then uh, using your finger, detach the muscle from the capsule or suprapatellar pouch. Uh, using uh, uh, from the media side to the lateral sides. So using your finger, you can feel uh, the dorsal part of uh, suprapateral pouch, and you can feel the bone, femur bone, and you should detach this area uh, to the lateral, lateral uh, aspect of the femur. Uh, this is uh, the photo. So detach the buses made uh, from the underlying suprapateral pouch using your finger. Then lift up the muscle. I'm uh, sorry, the quality is not good. So then you can find uh, suprapateral pouch here. And uh, this is the muscle is uh, completely retracted. and Oh, you can see the uh, the suprapatellar pouch completely. In this stage, uh, there is you uh, not open the capsule yet. Only uh, this side, media side of the joint only. The next, okay. So lift up the bustle. This is the shema of this stage. Lift up the bus of medialis only and expose uh, the suprapateral pouch and cut the suprapateral pouch laterally. So lift up the muscle and incise uh, the suprapateral pouch laterally, like this. So this is, this enables uh, patera lateral schist easily. So the pre the what prevents the patellar lateral movement is uh, tight and also called uh, very tight tissue such as fascia and capsule. So the ones inside the capsule and the fascia patella are muscle belly can stretch easily, so patella can move laterally completely. So uh, in this approach, the understanding of the anatomy is very, very important. 
This is the photo. Uh, this retractor lifted up the mass versus medialis so that we can see the very well the structure of this area. This is the muscle company uh, compartment uh, surrounded by fascia. Oh, this is the joint cavity. Uh, the green line is synovium layer. So in this part, so muscle fascia and joint uh, capsule is uh, joint each other. And this is a ligamentous capsule, uh, so-called retinacle. Then uh, this is the side of capsule, and this is a ligamental capsule, in so-called retinacle. So there are the two layers of uh, a capsule in the one in the side of and another is the ligamentous, uh, just like the hip. So between the two layers, there are thin but layer. So in the upper side, this uh, side of a capsule is very thick, but in this area, the so side of a capsule is uh, become very thin, and uh, the lights on the part of tissue, infrapatellar part of tissue. On the other hand, uh, this fascia is very, very thin in the upper side of this area and gradually thickened and this area is very thick. So uh, in this area, is fascia is very thin and tightly uh, attached to the joint capsule. So in this approach, uh, that we cut this area. This is there. So place here and uh, capture in the same time. Now uh, this is a key point. And after the lift up uh, the muscle and before uh, the cutting of the capsule, you can sometimes identify the MPFL, so medial uh, patrofemoral ligament. Uh, sometimes uh, see, you can identify uh, the thin band, uh, approximately one centimeter in width, but sometimes you can't identify it in PF where uh, this is only the thickened capsule. Anyway, this is a very uh, interesting. The insights, anyway. Inside the patero, uh, suprapateral pouch laterally, like this, in this laterally. So, uh, the aiming of this retractor. So, from here to the base of this uh, retractor, that's the right uh, direction of the capsulotomy. Then, uh, the self femur is uh, exposed completely. The key point is to retract the muscle and patella at one piece and lateral to the lateral condyles. Once the patella and the basal muscles is moved to the lateral to the lateral condyles, so extensor me mechanism can be shortened. Then, uh, this end of femur is exposed uh, sufficiently. To expose, to get more good exposure, only you can uh, flex the knee deeply. Then, uh, muscle and patella is shifted laterally and automatically, and we can get very, very good visualization in both distal femur and proximal tibia. So it is another key point. So anyway, move patella and patella tendon over the lateral condyle and uh, on the lateral gather. That is the key point of this operation. Uh, to uh, expose the proximal tibia, it is also easy. 
So I recommend to use two retractors. The one is a PCA retractor, and another one is a little bit uh, wide elevator, uh, so called lateral elevator. So use a PCA retractor, uh, push the tibia anteriorly, and in the same time, femur, uh, push the femur posteriorly. In the same time, use the lateral retractor, uh, push the tibia medially and patellar laterally. And hold the ankle to keep the tibia vertical. If this uh, leg inclined laterally, yeah, so exposure is not so good. So keep the vertical or slightly medial. It's a key point to get a good visualization. So closure is uh, the same. So completely reverse step. So the first three should uh, repair the superpatellar pouch under the basal medial, uh, medialis muscle. Uh, in this time, so lift up uh, the basal medialis by retractor and find uh, the superpatellar pouch and and suture, make the suture from the laterally and medially in this part, in this part. Then uh, close the media side of uh, capsule in the deeper one, uh, superficial, uh, superficial one in the same time. Then repair the fascia here uh, using another thread. Then uh disoriented. This part is very, very important because uh fascia is very, very thick. Uh sometimes it includes uh, MPFL. So uh the parts you uh, repair this second uh fascia uh very very tightly and very securely. It is a key point of this uh, closure. And then skin closure. Uh, it is uh, up to you, uh, any type of suture you can use. So oh, this is a capsule folder. I lift up the bust of medialis and uh, repair the superpatellar pouch. Uh, I prefer to use the bulb the suture at this time because it is very convenient, very quick. Then this is the medial capsule and this area the fascia is very, very thick. And below this area, so uh, superficial and deep capsule is sutures at the same time. Then this is finish of the suturing. And this is a facial suture in the passus medialis and the thickened fascia and MPFL in the same time. Oh, and then I will show you a video. Oh, that it is a raw video in the fraction. Identify tibia tubercle and ptera, ptera, tibia tubercle, ET, P, and uh, ptera tendon, and joint line. Here, here, yes. The line is this one. This is, uh, this patient is total. So, Skin length, uh, incision length is a bit long and cut, but never cut so deep. In the fraction, cut the skin in fraction, uh, fraction and extend and detach the fat tissue of subcutaneous tissue from the fascia and the retinaculum. So in approximately the detach the skin to the media and expose 
the face here of Basil Medaris and the star as well. Okay, and using the finger, the touch. Uh, identify the media border of stratendon and the joint line. This is a joint line. So cut the capsule. To identify the patro tendon, so touch a few the media border or tibia tubercles uh, is very, very <clears throat> easy to identify the media border of the patrocendo. Then cut. Oh, oh, sorry. Media size is already cut. And cut here, then cut the face here medially. Okay, already cut. Then lift up the patella laterally. Then here, here is a suprapatellar pouch. And the face here is still tight here. In this area, face here is Touch to the skin very tightly. So sometimes you need scissors to detach from the skin and cut proximally. Then inside the suprapatellar pouch laterally. Yes, then expose the knee joint widely. Next. Detach the soft tissue and from the anterior border of uh, tibia and remove the fat tissue and insert the elevator between the fat tissue and patellar tendon and pick up the fat tissue and remove. If you don't like remove fat tissue, you can retain it. But for the good exposure, I recommend to remove this one. And detach the soft tissue along the bony surface laterally and insert the elevator under the anti ITB. Then detach the capsule and periosteum just anterior to guarded the tubercle. Then insert the elevator between guarded the tubercle and ITB and lift up the ITB and detach the lateral uh, aspect of the trivia approximately one centimeter below the joint line uh, because at least 10 millimeter bone is cut on the lateral side. So yes, then once you detach the ITV around one centimeter below the jaw line, the elevator can be inserted along the lateral border of the lateral plateau. That is also beneficial for protects the lateral aspect of the tibia during the tibia bone cut. After the complete bone cut, this elevator can be inserted around the proximal femur tibial uh, tibia joint. Anyway, it is almost completed with the lateral side. Then move on to the media side. So detach the media side are very important because media border of 
uh, media plato should be protected by the retractor. So for the successful PK, the MCL retention is very, very important. So you should, every time, you should keep in mind to protect MCL. So MCL is very, very important. So detach and protect. So regard to the media side, at least so two or three millimeters uh, for the mechanical alignment PK, and at least five or six or even seven or eight centimeter below the joint line is required. So uh, enough detachment, but not release is very important in the both lateral side and media side. So I uh, detach the MCL uh, a little bit to protect MCL. Then uh, this is the exposure. So using uh, the elevator. So uh, this is uh, buses medallies is still there, but using the retractor like this. So moves the bustus medialis and the patella, the lateral to the lateral condyle. Then exposure is complete. Even in the very, very short incision, you can expose everything. And this is a closure. Close, so identify the lateral end of the capsulotomy and the repair from here. In this case, suprapateral pouch is inside here, from here to here. Then repair the capsule as perfect as possible. Like this. Skip. Then have a look. This is the capsule in the patella side. This is a capsule to the femur side. This is also capsule. Yes. This is also capsule. Then this is uh, uh, lower border of buses medialis. Below here, so superficial layer, uh, that's a retina column, uh, the deeper layer, the side of a layer, is sutured at in the same time, all at once, deeper and superficial, the superficial and deeper. This is a superficial layer. Then repair the media capsule continuously. Okay, close. Skip. Okay, close. It's completed. Then I inject intraarticularly. For the next some acid to stop bleeding 
and and make sure the uh, capsule is repaired completely or not. Then move on to the facial repair. In this area, the facial is very thin. Uh, sometimes it's a tone. But anyways, repair as perfect as possible. But according to the distal side, the face here is thicker and thicker. And this point, face here is very, very thick. And sometimes the fiber of MCL MPLA is included in the second phase, phase here. Okay, skip. So this area is very important. So I made suture uh, several times. Finish. The skin closure. That's all. Okay, finished. Okay, in summary, uh, this is the tips of underpasses approach the, to achieve a good procedure. The cut the cups capsule as laterally as possible, and cut the proxima uh, facia as proximal as possible. And no worry, uh, they are uh, completely repaired in the late step of uh, surgery. That they are the main obstacle or patellar retraction or patellar lateral movement. Uh, and flex the knee as deeply as possible to good exposure of the, uh, the femur. So, and to the good uh, visualization on the patellar, draw the proximal patellar, uh, sorry, the proximal tibia anteriorly and medially using the retractors. So uh, the advantages of the capsular repair is uh, prevent the leakage of anterior uh, articular hemorrhage uh, to the muscle compartment. So diminish the muscle inflammation and swelling. So this is an uh, advantage of the anterior capsular closure. Uh, the first time, so it is very, very difficult to identify the capsule uh, after at the time of closure. But carefully looking, uh, you can find, sometimes find, uh, you can always find uh, the capsular end of the capsular uh, incision inside the capsule, and then start to flow uh the end of uh capsula open they suture and go back to uh the media side and interval it might be easier getting easier and easier so anyway please try to uh repair the completely anyway uh increase the intracular pressure and decrease breathing is uh, the other beneficial, uh, the benefit of the anterior capsular suture. So the most key po important key point is identify the anatomy around here. So next time so you should carefully observe uh, the layer structure at this area.
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Professor, you can stop sharing. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for this detailed presentation and uh, amazing surgical technique as well. Thank you. Uh, Prof, a uh, few questions. Yes. Professor, is there any randomized control trial available that compares oh, the... Yes, yes. It that possible. compares the endovastus no, with the other yeah, both. Yeah. So far, no. I'm sorry. I... Uh, as of, oh, around 50 years ago, I changed to this approach from the ordinary uh, bit busters, uh, the middle parapasal approach, but result is dramatically changed very, very well. So very, most of patients are very happy after that. So I cannot go back to the <laughs> uh, middle parapasal approach. So. Uh, there is a no compare. So I only the compare, the historical compare, the before uh, the buses meter, uh, uh, sorry, sub buses and after the sub buses. But compared to the before, the after sub buses is so uh, very, very quick recover. So next day, the patient can walk very smoothly and the pain is reduced. And after uh, the capsular, complete capsular closure, the swelling is dramatically reduced. If I uh, repair the capsule completely. So to confirm this, I inject interarticular uh, the terminal acid. Uh, there is the leakage or not. If uh, the no leakage, the patient is very happy. Uh, partially no swelling after the operation. I'm sorry, but there is no randomized control study. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prof. And Professor, how popular is this approach in Japan, the undervastus approach? I know you are uh, doing, uh, uh, Dr. Tatsumi uh, is doing. Some doctor is come to my hospital, he see my surgery. So after that, uh, most do uh, doctor try and then success, but, so many uh, Japanese surgeons hated to do the subbusters approach. This is uh, how the image. It is very difficult to uh, difficult to expose. But after uh, observe my operation, many doctors moved to this approach. But uh, maybe population is very very rare so far. So I spread this approach. <laughs> I'm spreading this approach. To many thank, you. thank you very much, Prof. And Prof, do you think the need for a lateral retinacular release yeah. is lesser with the underwestus approach? Of course, of course. I uh, use lateral retinacular uh, release only for the patient uh, that already have patellar subluxation or severe bone loss. In the normal cases, no more patra cases, virtually no retinal release or without some technique. Without some, the patra tracking is really good, even after the kinematic alignment. And what about hematoma formation around the quadriceps? Uh, if I repair uh, the capsule completely, virtually no uh breathing in wound in the muscle but uh sometimes it is impossible because the breakage of uh the capsule uh for example so removing the anterior fragment fragment during this procedure the anterior capsule is sometimes damaged and the steps it is very clear if i uh, fails to repair the capsule, the patient have subcutaneous hemorrhage in the media side of the thigh. Also, I feel, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't <laughs> repair the uh, capsule completely. But uh, if I repair the capsule completely, no swelling and no subcutaneous uh, bleeding on the thigh. 
Thank you very much, Prof. Prof, just one last question before we wind yes. up the session. Uh, yeah. Prof, is there any difficulty for you to conduct a randomized control trial in your hospital? Do you have any uh, technical difficulties in general, not only for the uh, underwater? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yes. you do, yes, you do yes. a lot of I can, surgery. I can do. I can do. So I will do. <laughs> okay, it's, so. It's not easy, but uh, it's in my feeling. It's very, uh, I'm sorry for the <laughs> patient. I have to do uh, the media pattern approach for you. <laughs> uh, this is my hesitation. So I believe this approach is very good and very nice. So I don't like to go back to the uh, media pattern approach that's all that's all of course uh theoretically it's possible and in your future i will do maybe so i probe this uh, approach is very good thank you very much prof prof i think that's all the questions that we have for the session thank you for yet another wonderful presentation and i'm sure this is going to reach a lot of people all over the world thank you so much for joining it prof thank you bye-bye bye-bye